Since its earnings announcement in early May, we saw the stock price of Square under some pressure, although over the last month it has recovered. So is this the start of another run back to those all-time highs up at $280 a share? I thought it'd be interesting to do an update uh, on Square. We last looked at them about a month ago, and I thought it was interesting back then they were building this base around $200 a share. Since then, we have seen something of a recovery uh, in the stock price. So as usual in this video, I'll talk a bit about the news since then, then we'll come back uh, onto the charts and take a look at things in a bit more detail. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com, and I thought this time around in our stocks video, we take a look at uh, Square again. We've seen a good rise over the last month, so let's do an update, um, catch up with the latest news, and have a look at the, the charts and the technicals in a bit more detail. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, if you could click on subscribe, it does help support the channel and means we can continue uh, to push out lots of different content during the week on the various different stocks that we take a look at. Right, let's get into it and take a look at Square in a bit more detail. So what do they do? They're a financial, service, uh, financial services and digital payments uh, business. Their first product was the Square Reader, which uh, let users take credit card payments on a mobile phone. The company was founded um, back in 2009. Um, Jack Dorsey, the Twitter founder, was also uh, one of the founders of Square, and it came to the market via IPO in 2015. Its latest earnings came out in May of this year, so um, just over a month ago, and it did smash through expectations. Expectations were for around 16 cents per share earnings, um, it came in at 41 cents per share. So I think that's something that's probably held sentiment over the last month or so. So market expectations for the next quarterly earnings um, due out in, in August have been raised. So expectations are for around 31 cents a share for the next earnings. Um, and a big driver here, I think, is the success of Square's um, cash app, which is outperforming, I think, on the sales side. So we're seeing those expectations getting jacked up a bit. It's been a good month for the stock of Square. Um, it's up around, I think, 11% from where it was a month ago. It hasn't quite break and th broken through the post-earnings high just yet, but we'll take a look at all of that in a second. Let's just talk about some of the levels to watch. So I think the first hurdle, it is that post um, first quarter earnings high coming in around $242 a share. Perhaps if the stock can break through here, we can see a bit more momentum and um, at some point even start targeting the all-time high. On the downside, I think the major low after earnings comes in at 210 a share. That has been quite a base, I think, for the stock price. So as usual, to put some color on these numbers, let's jump on the chart and have a look at things in a bit more detail. In common with plenty of other technology companies, Square Stock made a great recovery off its March lows, pushing as high as $283 a share in February of this year from a low of around $32 in March of 2020. But since then, it's struggled to find much momentum. We've been sideways, fallen out of this trend line, but just because a stock breaks through a trend line doesn't necessarily mean that trend is over. Let's take a look at things in a bit more detail. I've put a 20-day moving average on here. Um, moving averages are great when markets are trending. You can see the period here from April through to September, but they can get a bit messy and give lots of signals when a market's going sideways. And that's what we've had over the last four months or so for Square um, as it has traded in this sideways range. The last signal we had from the moving average was a buy signal uh, on around the 10th of June as the price moved above that moving average through around uh, $210 a share, and it's pushed a bit higher since then. But I don't think it's adding too much at to the moment because we are in this this broad sideways trend. Oscillators such as RSIs giving overbought, oversold signals can be a bit more useful in sideways moving markets. And it's not done a bad job, the various overbought and oversold signals in calling the turning points uh, in this latest, I suppose, consolidation phase uh, for Square. At the moment, we're, we're near to overbought, which is not surprising given the rise. Um, if the market, if the stock price of Square pushed a little bit higher, perhaps we'd get um, a sell signal um, off the RSI. But at the moment, with the RSI around 60%, I think the price action is more important. 
So looking at what's been happening since Feb, um, clearly whenever we've seen the stock run up towards $280 a share, market sentiment has shifted and taken the view that perhaps uh, it's looking a bit expensive up here. Down in the $190 to $200 zone, we've seen the buyers come back out again. So I think from a technical point of view, um, probably to see if the next trend is starting, we'd need to wait for a break through these all these old all-time highs, see if we can get a break through 283 a share and start the next leg higher. From a shorter term trading point of view, clearly 190 to 200 dollars has provided good support for the stock price. So a short to medium term trader may still be looking to buy the dips uh, when it comes to Square. And only if it starts to break below 190 do we need to worry about a deeper sell-off, perhaps initially targeting the early November lows down at 155. So overall, I think it's still positive, even though it's had a fairly boring sideways uh, four months or so. If it comes under pressure from here, if we see wider market weakness, it'll be interesting to see what happens if it does drop back towards $200 a share. But so far, that zone has proved to be very good support. That's it for the update uh, on Square. We'll come back to it and see how it's performing. But for now, from me, David Jones and Capital.com, we'll leave things there. Good luck with your investing. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel.